One of the reasons why slavery persisted in human society for so long, particularly in the classical era, the ancient Greek and Roman era, is the simple fact that just because one does not wish to either become or remain a slave, it does not follow that one is opposed to the institution of slavery itself. We're used to seeing in movies like Spartacus all these heroic armies trying to abolish slavery, but it didn't really work like, like that in the common thinking of the era. Um, it's an unfortunate fact, but when you read ancient accounts of slavery, uh, examinations, the worst masters were usually ex-slaves. <laughs> so we have to make a distinction between not wanting a certain fate to befall us <laughs> and actually being opposed in a general sense to that particular state of, of befalling anyone. <clears throat> now, I mentioned in my previous video that um, in order for, for the law to become involved in ethics, we have to make a case for it being both um, immoral uh, or requiring a moral ruling uh, and it has to be uh, disruptive to society in general because as I say we do have plenty of examples of immoral things uh, that we have no intention of legislating against um, laying a heavy guilt trip on someone can drive them out of their mind quite literally but there's no way we can legislate against that uh, it's still horribly immoral if you ask me the deliberate messing with someone else's mind emotional abuse um, that was the example I gave. Now, um, in the case of eating meat, okay, the an objection to the previous argument is, well, why don't we just include animals in society? Because it is, um, it will then become disruptive for us to continue to consume meat because um, animals are now part of society and we are disrupting society by consuming them. Not necessarily. We can communicate with other human beings quite effectively and determine what they think about certain things. Um, but I don't have much faith in our ability to communicate with animals. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I have two cats. I don't believe that I ever really effectively communicate with them. Um, but let me illustrate. I can ask a human being or rather, I can take it for granted that a human being does not wish to be murdered. That's sort of an assumption. But, what does this human being think about murder itself? Okay, you don't want me to kill you. What if I kill him over there? What do you think about that? Well, he can tell me what he thinks about that. All right. I go up to a uh, cow and I look as though I'm about to do it some harm. The cow is not going to like that one little bit. The cow is going to probably elicit signs of stress. Okay. Um, what if I go kill that cow over there? What do you think, Miss Cow? I don't know what the cow thinks of that. Um, I'm not really saying that this is a K 
case in favor of eating meat, mind you, and it has never been my intention from the beginning of this series to criticize vegetarianism in any way at all. But we don't know what animals think about the consumption of meat, per se. We don't. Um, we know what they think, well, I think it's a fairly useful axiom to assume that none of them want to be killed or harmed or stressed or bothered or anything in any way. That's, I'll, I'll, I think we can take that as a given. But we don't really know their thinking enough to know if they have any, uh, any notion of concepts such as um, meat eating in the first place. Do they even understand the idea of meat eating? Do they even understand what a meat eater versus a vegetarian is? Do they understand, or maybe they do understand it, but they're, they're, they're hi the hierarchy of their thinking or the priority of their thinking puts it very low because they're only considered, they're only really concerned about themselves, really, in their own DNA or whatever. Now, there's plenty of cases of altruism in the uh, animal kingdom, I understand that. But, um, or apparent altruism, I guess, because at the end of the day, we don't know what they're thinking. But, the fact that we can communicate effectively with human beings means that, or at least reasonably effectively, means that we can have some more in-depth moral discussion than we can have with a species we cannot communicate effectively with. Don't make the mistake of assuming that the way that we arrange our morals is sort of the law of nature. Um, right now it seems rather insane that anyone should have to make a case against slavery, but at one point that case most certainly had to be made. Again, the army of Spartacus. Um, we tend to see them as an army of liberation, whereas most of them were probably thinking, I just want to get out of bondage. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that one doesn't want to own slaves oneself. That had to be uh, a long-term sea change in society's thinking. What do animals think about the concept of meat-eating itself. We don't know. Um, so we can't tell whether or not that is disruptive. The general hints that we get in terms of um, our society, um, just think of the, or in terms of our husbandry of animals, just think of the animals that are the easiest to domesticate, the ones that we have um, sort of evolved uh, to domesticate cows, sheep, chickens, pigs. Um, they're notoriously, I would say, unempathetic, I guess. I don't really know. We don't know what they're thinking. But um, sheep, calling someone sheep, calling people sheep is notorious for, yeah, you're just lining up uh, uh, like uh, sheep for the slaughter here. You don't care what happens to your, yourself even, let alone what happens to anybody else. Well, if you've ever seen the way that sheep function and chickens, you, you get a fairly good idea that this may actually be true, that they don't care what happens to any other animal. I've seen, and uh, if anyone has ever seen free-range chickens, I saw a dog once when I was a kid, it kind of bothered me, visited my uncle's farm. The dog uh, got out, killed a chicken, and there was another chicken right next to it, pecking away, scratching uh, for the next little thing to swallow. Didn't even pay hardly any attention whatsoever to what was going on right there in front of it. The dog killed a chicken, another chicken. It didn't seem to grasp that this could be a threat to itself, and it certainly didn't seem to be in any way moved by empathy towards this other chicken. Um, again, I don't know what's going on in its head, but the communication barrier is so profound that I don't have any way of knowing. So that's the problem that I have with sort of co-opting animals into human society. We don't know if we're actually doing this with their consent or not.
thank you.